हेलो डियर स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू माय चैनल टुडे वी स्टार्ट विथ न्यू फ्रेश चैप्टर चैप्टर नंबर नाइन एनर्जी रिसोर्सेस नाउ स्टूडेंट्स मे आई आस्क यू हैड यू हैड योर ब्रेकफास्ट इन द मॉर्निंग आई कैन हियर द येस फ्रॉम यू ऑल सो द ब्रेकफास्ट दैट यू ईट द फूड दैट यू ईट गिव्स यू एनर्जी ना वॉट इज दिस एनर्जी एनर्जी इज द कपैसिटी ऑफ डूइंग वर्क we are able to do different activities in the course of the day because of the food that we have eaten because of the energy that we have got from the food so with this introduction we begin the chapter here you can see the different forms of energy you can see tidal energy you can see biomass energy you can see the wind energy shown there okay you can see solar energy wave energy geothermal nuclear so these are some of the different forms of energy here in the figure 9.1 this is an activity of can you tell observe the figure and answer the question in this figure 9.1 you can see the girl is studying in the light of a lantern now the question related to this is which energy resource is used in figure 9.1 to obtain the light so the energy to obtain the light is the kerosene that is used in this lantern so the energy resource here is the kerosene which is filled inside this lantern where did this resource come from this resource we are getting from the interior of the earth when you dig below the surface of the land or when you dig below the surface of the ocean floor at certain places you get mineral oil and it is from this mineral oil you get the energy resource kerosene which is used in this lamp the figure 9.2 of your textbook you can see the car is being filled with petrol or maybe diesel so it's a site of it a scene of a petrol pump the attendant there is filling the tank with the uh, petrol or diesel but this petrol or diesel are nothing but mineral oil so from where this did this energy is brought to the pump it is through the pipeline or maybe the containers have filled the base of the petrol pump with this mineral oil and it is from this petrol pump it is filled inside your vehicle figure 9.3 here you can see the girl is playing with a pinwheel her father is standing on the top of a table and he is doing the activity of winnowing the grain now students you know winnowing is removing the lighter husk particles and other dirt particles from the grain the wind blows away the husk heavier grains are collected at the base of the table there so in both of these activities that is for moving that pin wheel and in winnowing the grain who is helping them both the answer to it is the moving moving air which we called as wind so wind is helping them both let us see the next one figure 9.4 which energy resource is used in lighting the lamp running the rickshaw and heating oil as shown in figure 9.4 so here you can see the vendor is having a light there the cylinder below that light contains so we were seeing what is uh, the fuel what is the resource which is what is the energy which is used to light this lantern so here gas is filled lpg gas you can also see lpg gas is used for heating the oil so what is the full form of lpg liquidified petroleum gas and on that rickshaw you can see cng is written there cng means compressed natural gas so natural gas is used to run that rickshaw liquidified petroleum gas is used for lighting the lantern and for heating the oil now see the next one you can see a solar energy panel is shown in figure 9.5 
what are the various purpose for which man can use sunlight now man is using sunlight let us start with simple activities for drying the clothes sun drying the grains okay uh, drying your um, pulses vegetable pulses and um, cereals which you are storing for the entire year it is used for making pickles okay sun dried pickles jams and murabbas are made then sunlight plant is using for preparing their food that is photosynthesis sunlight is used or energy of the sun solar energy is used in um so we are seeing what the solar energy is used for solar energy is also used in uh, setting the water cycle and we know it is because of the water cycle that we get rain and you can see the solar panels laid here it is because of the solar panel that the the solar uh, energy is converted into electric energy maybe this is used for heating the water boiling the water or for electrical purposes now energy resources can be okay man is using this energy resources for his different needs for his different activities so for all the activities we require energy in the past human labors and animal were used for many tasks that means in the earlier time when we had no idea of such energy resources it was the human efforts and with the help of animal many of the task man were completing gradually man's need increased okay he required the use of energy in many places so with this different energy resources were discovered different devices were invented and still man uh, although he is making use of this different energy resources and devices he is basically dependent for his energy need from nature on nature you must have realized that while answering the above question we have used petrol wind natural gas uh, sunlight etc besides other resources okay now energy resources are classified into many ways conventional that means the one which we have been using for long time and non conventional means those form of energy resources which we have recently start using biotic and abiotic is one way of classification biotic means energy resources obtained from living things and abiotic means obtained from the non living things we can also classify resources as renewable and non renewable renewable means which can be replenished again and again so once it is over you can get it a fresh get it new again non renewable means once it gets over once it is finished it is next to impossible to make it new then it can also be classified energy resources can also be classified as substance based and process based energy resources the table below will show you the characteristics of these different forms of energy resources substance based energy resources example are wood coal mineral oil natural gas waste material etc means these substances can be directly utilized to to give you energy can be directly utilized to give the energy but in process based energy resources example of which are the sun wind water tides heat from the earth's interior they have we cannot use it directly but for example to utilize the sun energy we require the help of solar panels to utilize the energy from the wind we have to set up windmill so certain processes are involved to get energy from these particular sources second one under substance based energy resources substance do not last perpetually means they are not permanent they are not lasting forever whereas in process based energy resources natural processes are perpetual ever lasting next one the substance get used up wood when you burn it 
ash is remain behind coal on burning leaves behind ash so it is completely used completely utilized but the processes are always available solar panels or windmill once set you can keep on using this for many many years next we will we will see the next characteristic in substance based energy resources reuse is not possible once the mineral oil is used up or once when you have burnt the coal or wood you cannot use the same wood again because it has now been converted into ash or mineral oil has already disappeared fine but reuse is possible in the case of process based energy resource for example if you are using the water of river for generation of hydel power this after the turbine is rotated after the uh, energy is produced from that water the water can be used to watering the plant or maybe for some other purpose so can you see reuse of that energy resource is possible next one in substance based energy resources the availability is limited that means the reserves of this energy resources are limited and in process based unlimited sun will be there always wind will keep on blowing for time immemorial okay next one it take thousands of year to replenish them that means once the coal mineral oil natural gas is used up to form it new it will require few more thousands of years so that means it is not easily available and it cannot be remade again but the process based natural energy resources these are easily available in nature except for atomic energy all the other resources are biotic that means they are uh the origin of them are living things wood we get from plant which are living thing coal mineral oil natural gas we get from trees plants and animals which were existing on this earth long long ago means their origin is origin of these resources are biotic material except atomic energy in process based natural resources all of these processes are natural next one generation of energy leads to pollution in the case of substance based energy resources but no pollution occurs in the process based energy resources next one except for atomic energy all other resources are conventional that means we have been using them for a long time but process based energy resources we have started making use of this energy resources recently in recent times generation of energy using substance based are relatively cheaper whereas to set up uh, the process based energy resources the technology is required which is an expensive process so process based energy resource for implementation for setting up uh, the uh, development of technology is an expensive process next being inflammable they will cause damage to the environment and they will be polluting the environment also but process based natural resources they are environment friendly now type of power generation in process in substance based thermal and atomic and in process based it is thermal and kinetic yeah using the resources different kinds of power generation is possible for example hydel power thermal power atomic power geothermal power in hydel power station the kinetic energy in running water is utilized and uh, it is converted into electric energy in thermal power station uh, it is necessary to burn the energy resources for example coal or mineral oil is burnt and energy is um, generated uh, that heat energy is converted into electric energy now in this figure 9.6 students you can see that man is cooking on the stove which is called as chulha okay it is the earthen stove and the fuel used here the energy resource used here is the wood so we are seeing the different forms 
of energy resource used in cooking so here wood is used for cooking in the next picture you can see that man is roasting the corn roasting that maize but here to cook this to roast this he is making the use of a coal burner inside that stove inside that burner coal is kept burning and you can see he is having that fan and he is fanning that coal to keep the coal burning and to roast the uh, corn properly here this lady is cooking on the kerosene stove inside the container at the base you will see uh, you, you must be knowing that kerosene is stored there and it is through the burner that you get the flame there is a slow supply of kerosene to the burner and kerosene is used in this stove here this man is removing the baked item from the oven oven works on electricity this chef is cooking on a gas stove which must be making use of lpg or natural gas so in all these different forms of cooking we have made use of different energy resources here do you know the demand for energy is constantly on rise as the human population in is increasing the needs of the human being is increasing and the greed of human being is also increasing so the demand for energy is increasing solar energy and wind energy are easily available to us okay available sunlight is available from morning 8 o'clock maybe till 6 o'clock in the evening the wind keeps on blowing but the only problem using this is uh, during the daytime the sunlight will be charging will be um, made use of in this solar panel but when the sun sets the solar panels if they are charged with the sunlight or if enough sunlight is stored then uh, the energy can be utilized at the night time also so the main problem here is the storage sufficient quantity of storage of this solar energy and wind energy to ensure continuous power supply so at present to ensure this continuous power supply when the sources are not there is an expensive task but efforts are being made so that the panels which are charged during the daytime the energy which is stored in the daytime this process which is costly which is expensive today can be made affordable so research is being made now substance based energy resources in that we will talk about wood first the wood uh, in the earlier time people used to collect the dry branches the dry twigs that have fallen uh, down in the in the jungle and they used to burn it on the earthen stove for their cooking purpose so wood which is a biotic material in villages it is used for cooking you can see that old lady cooking on the earthen stove making use of this logs of wood then coal the formation of coal is a natural process it's a very long process long long ago when the plants and animals on the earth got buried inside the earth because of the earth movement layer after layer of soil was deposited on it we have already studied about this in types of rock coal seams are found in sedimentary rock remember so it is because of the heat of the interior of the earth and because of the pressure of the above overlying layer that this remains of plants and animals it has got converted into element carbon and this is how coal was formed so different types of coal are available okay there are different grades of coal peat lignite bituminous anthracite these are some of the different types of coal depending upon the grade so the quality of the coal will will determine for which purpose this coal will be used a lower grade coal is used for cooking but a good grade coal or high grade coal it is used in industries it is used for generation of thermal power okay uh, charcoal students you know if you burn coal a lot of smoke will be produced but on burning charcoal 
uh, very less or negligible amount of smoke is produced mineral oil and natural gas another form of substance based energy resource is mineral oil you can see that blackish liquid is filled in that barrel in that drum so just like coal this mineral oil is also prepared naturally okay inside the earth it is um, it is produced because of the heat and the pressure so mineral oil is found inside the land surface that is under the land surface or maybe below the ocean floors here you can see an oil rig okay and the areas where you find mineral oil in the vicinity means in the areas nearby natural gas is also found so the areas of mineral oil and natural gas are almost the same again this mineral oil is deposits of this are limited in nature okay and it's very costly i don't have to tell you the price of petrol and diesel is continuously rising so it is because of its high cost and its great demand that this black liquid is called as black gold as it is blackish in color it is expensive it is very uh, people are demanding it in large quantity this petroleum or this mineral oil uh, products are called as black gold okay this mineral oil just like coal is used in uh, thermal power generation plants your uh, the purification the refinery is shown where this mineral oil by using the process of fractional distillation different products are separated from it we get petrol diesel kerosene tar naphtha and certain other products from this mineral oil here very important map this is the map of india showing the major coal and mineral oil fields if you see the index that grayish color symbol shows the coal fields mineral oil fields are shown by shading it with um, lines and black dots and the green color shows you the godavari river basin there are certain questions below this map let us answer these questions now name the states which have coal fields we want the name of the states and not the name of the mines where you get this coal so the states here will be all the states which shows this uh, gray sim gray shading so chatisgarh jharkhand madhya pradesh orissa bihar west bengal you can also find coal in assam hmm? coal is also found in jammu and kashmir it is found at one place in rajasthan it is found in gujarat um yes it is found in gujarat in maharashtra telangana and uh, at one place in tamil nadu also so ye sab places ke naam likhne hain ye sab states ke naam likhne hain let me repeat jharkhand chatisgarh madhya pradesh orissa west bengal bihar it is found in assam jammu and kashmir rajasthan gujarat maharashtra telangana andhra pradesh and tamil nadu okay so we go to the next question now name the mineral fields mineral oil fields in arabian sea so in arabian sea you find mineral oil only in one place and the name of the place is mumbai high in the arabian sea you get mineral oil at mumbai high this is the oil rig offshore the mumbai coast name two states which have coal fields on large scale first question we have talked about all the states having coal fields but only two states which are having coal on large scale so jharkhand and chatisgarh here you find many coal fields are there so name the two states will be jharkhand chatisgarh which mineral oil fields are located in northeast india now we don't want the name of the state here we want the name of the oil field huh? that means wo mine ka naam chahiye but in northwest the eastern part of india so let us start digboy d i g b o i can you see digboy in assam then you have lakhani nunmati okay you have makum and you have nankatia these are the 
places in northeast india having mineral oil i repeat lakhani nunmatia nan uh, nunmati nankatia digboy and nukum uh, makum okay next one the resources of which minerals are found in godavari basin so if you see that green color in that is a godavari basin you find coal here which mineral is found here coal is found in godavari basin which of the states have mineral reserves in godavari basin so indirectly the question asks godavari basin is in which states so it is in maharashtra it is in chatisgarh telangana and andhra pradesh also it is shown in madhya pradesh but at least this four states you can say godavari basin Uh, the mineral reserves are in state of maharashtra chatisgarh telangana andhra pradesh okay we move ahead biogas plant now such biogas plant you must have seen in the village side some of the farmers have set up biogas plant of course government is giving subsidies in setting up biogas plant now what is put inside this biogas plant of course cow dung and in addition to that pieces of animal and human beings dried leaves shell even on the leftover wet garbage of your home is put inside this biogas plant bacteria present in the cow dung they decompose this waste material and a gas is generated which we call as biogas plant oh, sorry which we call as biogas and this is <coughs> this energy can be used for domestic purpose that means you can use it for cooking for heating water for lighting lamps etc okay so on small scale the the domestic needs of energy can be fulfilled using this biogas plant now energy from waste material a lot of waste is generated every day in the household okay if you see the uh, waste bin in your house it is always filled okay when you when the uh, when you dump it into the um, big basket or the big bin and see the amount of waste which is collected there you will be surprised so for a big city okay if you if a single family is generating so much waste imagine the waste generated in your society that is in your building in your locality and the amount of waste generated in the entire metropolitan city will be very very large in quantity and the major issue before such metropolitan city is the disposal how to dispose this large waste which is generated day after day the best way is if we segregate this waste into dry and wet okay and the wet waste if it is utilize for generating energy okay the energy that you get from this wet waste you will be getting energy at the same time the disposal of waste that issue will also be solved and you know there are dumping ground with where this waste which is collected from each household is dumped okay and there is a huge heap a mountain of heap of this waste is collected there as it is the uh, the problem of land there is very less land in the metropolitan city and if this land is being used for dumping hmm, and the uh, waste generated each day will be so much so the big issue can be solved by generating energy from this waste material okay so in the future this will be the method of solving the problem of wastage disposal in the city your city will be getting Uh, the energy that is power requirement will be also solved and the issue of the problem of land will also be uh, solved in this way so you can see the waste is um, being converted into energy okay so the above energy resources are known as biofuels because they originate from remains of dead plants and animals we move ahead atomic energy splitting of the atom like minerals atom of minerals like uranium and thorium can be used for power generation and this process of splitting of the atom 
of heavier uh, atom like uranium thorium plutonium this process is called as nuclear fission you can see the breakage you can see the splitting of the heavier atom when that atom is bombarded when that atom is dashed when that atom is uh, bombarded with a single new uh, single neutron it has split that atom that fission product is left behind and three neutrons are formed which will be going to bombard the next three uh, atoms and in this reaction which is very spontaneous and it is a chain reaction large amount of heat energy will be generated okay and this same heat energy can be utilized for making energy for the generation of power uh, power plant so a uh, very small amount of uranium is required if i go to tell you only 1 kg of uranium is enough to produce energy which 10000 tons of coal can produce so 10000 coal of ton jitna energy banata hai utna 1 kg of uranium se banta hai so very small quantity of this mineral this uranium is required for generation of energy and a large scale energy can be produced many countries in the world including our nation india is making use of atomic energy and atomic energy should be used for peaceful purpose that is only for generation of uh, energy but nations of the world are using this atomic energy to make destructive weapons also thank you students